Okay, so this is part two of the video. I've had to break it, broke the uh, the video up into two parts. I uh, can't find a phone with enough memory. It's taking too long. Anyway, um, in the meantime, I managed to find the roller from the previous model machine. It's also the same roller that's used in the more expensive machine. So you can see there the difference in the size. So this is from the 9140, 9330. This is the one from the 9125, the 9970, 9460, uh, HL 4150. So you can see there it's much bigger. Let's put that around that way. Much bigger. Never fails doesn't fail till you hit around a hundred thousand pages of printing um, more surface area and as a result it doesn't fail every 30,000 pages which this one does so anyway um, so the next step so we got the bottom paper guide off so the next step is we have to separate the lower fuser roller from the upper fuser roller that's done by removing the springs. The springs pull the pressure roller up to apply pressure to the upper fuser roller so that the uh, toner can be melted onto the paper. So the other spring is over here. So what you need to do is you need to get yourself your pliers or if you've got a spring claw tool Simply hook it around the spring. I don't know if you can see that. And we just pull it off. Okay, so that one's released. Now the roller comes off. We'll do the same over this side. And you can see there it's simply hooked on and we just pull that off just bear with me so that's released and now the fuser roller which is held on by this hinge here and this hinge here comes out we lift it up it up and the roller comes away now as a course of my general practice in these machines um, what I do as a force of habit and I think it extends the life of this lower roller significantly is uh, when we put the unit back together, um, what I do is I pull this hinge off, I pull this hinge off, and because this roller has been used to being rotating in one direction constantly, I take the roller and I reverse it. So for this life cycle of this fuser, instead of the roller traveling in the direction that it used to travel in we travel it in the other direction now and I found through testing with clients machines that this extends the life of this roller significantly uh, simply because it's now getting wear um, on the opposite side see so the pressure and the torque that's put on by the turning gear here uh, it tends to put more pressure on one side of the roller. That side of the rubber gets sort of, I don't know, pressurized in one direction. By flipping the roller, it's now putting an even amount of wear across the roller. And I've just found it just simply lasts longer. So we'll just, we've now flipped it and put the ends back on. Now if you find on your lower roller that there's any damage at all, um, 
you know if you've gone into it with a knife to try and remove a jam if you've divoted it then the roll is basically stuffed um, you need to just simply throw the whole fuser away and go buy a new fuser or um, uh, if you've already purchased this roller we don't offer returns on this roller we simply supply the part um, if you discover that this rollers then you've got nothing to lose you might as well just reuse it because you've blown your dough and you've purchased this roller already um, and we don't offer returns on product because you've discovered that the rest of your fuser is stuffed so having said that we put this aside now just make sure you put it aside somewhere where it's nice and gentle I'll worry about that later because you don't want anything hard pushing against this roller and to potentially dent the surface of it okay so this is the fuser unit now this is the upper part of it with the uh, roller removed um, you can see there 